I didn't see it. All I know I, is I, we actually have it. the video. If we could play it for you, I heard. I heard something about. He said I was. I don't know a liar or something. I don't know. Okay, it's ready. But yeah, Roddy was a great talker. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. How about uh, Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff? Oh, it's gonna be right after. So Paul wants to go to the thing. Down in it leads into you. Uh, Paul was. I mean, you know what I admired about Paul? He would go in there and tell Vince he was gonna quit if Vince didn't do what he wants. Vince would do it. I never had the nerve to do that. But Paul was a guy, uh, I liked him personally, but more, never worried about getting anybody else over, always just worried about himself. And to me, you gotta, everybody's gotta get over for a thing to be, you know. I remember I did a thing with the giant, I can't even remember now what he did, but I said to the shower, and we were back in the shower, and I said, Paul, you know, that was fucked up. He said, what are you talking about? Ah, oh, you're full of shit, bunny, blah, 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 you know, okay. But it was fucked up. I mean, he had, you know, I can't remember what it was. It wasn't that big a thing, but he just, you know, it was all—it was all about him. Which everybody was all. Of course, everybody's all about you. But he took it to another. I remember one time. Now he—I know he made a hundred grand that week, that month working with Hogan. I just—I just noticed these things. Twenty-six dollar bill in the restaurant. He leaves a one dollar tip. Made a hundred grand that month. He leave a tip of less than four percent. That's the boys. Now, of course, somebody else probably picked up the tip. One of the restaurants. <laughs> it doesn't matter anyway. The honky talk man's famous for that. The dine and dash. Oh yeah, running out on the check. Never leaves a tip. Wayne will never leave a tip. What's no. that called? The dine and what is that? Dine and dash. He says him and the family do it a couple times a month at home. <laughs> I don't love his bullshit, but he never leaves a tip. One time we're working at this tour for Jake the Snake, a couple of years between Christmas and New Year's. So we're at lunch, and my bill's like eleven dollars. I leave the girl three dollars. He says, Bundy, pick up that money. I said, What do you mean, Wayne? He says, pick up that money. He said, if I leave a dollar for lunch, a dollar for breakfast, a dollar for lunch, two dollars, dude, that's four dollars a day. That's $28 a week. I can buy my kid a nice toy for $28. I said, but wait, she has kids and she likes to buy her kids toys too. Yeah. What do you think? I think Bundy's full of shit. He said Paul was full of shit. Every man's for himself. But he didn't say, you know what? I'm just, I'm just as big for myself too. Uh... I haven't seen Bundy and talked to him at all in a long time. The dine and dash, I don't know where that came from. But, uh, well, you know, if you get caught running out of a restaurant, you probably end up getting picked up or go to jail. And, I mean, I must be pretty good at it if I've done it for 50 years and not been picked up. So. Did you travel a lot with Bundy? No. I was around when he, he broke into business. and We were in Knoxville, Tennessee. He had a full head of hair. And he's always... He's, he, I've, all, I've enjoyed being around him, enjoy talking to him because he's, he's always boisterous, loud. Bundy takes over the room when he comes in. And uh, Why hasn't Vince brought him back to, like... Yeah, it's a good question. Why doesn't nobody ever ask him that? I've always wanted to know. He told, him, he told me once, he said, Man, you've done everything you could to that office up there. You've done everything. and You did this, you did that, you walked out, you quit, you did... The, well, he just said that Paul went in and said something about his, his money or threatened to quit, and he said he never he would never had the the backbone or what was it he said? I, I, I don't want to make up words, but he said something about I, he would never do that. Well, consequently, Squeaky Will gets the grease, I suppose, and uh, he never went in and said anything about it. So, why they never called him to come back? I only he can answer that, or only someone from WWE can answer. It's very bizarre because he's one of the very, very few people that has never, ever been called back there, ever, for anything, unless, unless he just doesn't want to do. He came back in '95, but other than that, no. I I don't know. I mean, you tell me, Bundy. You tell me, brother. I go back all the time. They call me for all kinds of stuff. Everybody's got to live, you know? Oh, God, ignorant. Ignorant as the day is long, Wayne Ferris. I used to like Wayne. He's an entertaining guy still, but just so ignorant you can't, you know? I love when he talks about that fucking Hogan, that motherfucker Hogan fucked me over. Hogan got him his job in the WWF. I was going to ask later, but uh, was it Hogan's idea to put the icy strap I don't on? know, but I'll tell you what happened. If, if Wayne Ferris says a lie, Wayne, you're a liar. And you're, you, for, you forgot, you probably blocked it out. It's so painful. We're wrestling in Calgary, Bret Hart's father's territories. I'm wrestling on top against Hulk. And Calgary is where guys are just starting out or wrestlers go to die. It's long trips, no money, and you're at the end of your rope. So Wayne's up there. He's dressed 
I think he was the honky tonk man. He's got an Elvis jumpsuit on. It's in it's in tatters. The bottom of it, like it's tattered. Mm -hmm. This looks like a homeless Elvis. The things he's wearing rags. He's wearing a jumpsuit that's rags, <laughs> and he's humble as a church mouse. Wouldn't say shit if he had a mouthful of it. And he's just so nice and so humble. And the Hulk said to me, you know, he wasn't like asking my, he was more like thinking out loud. He says, do you think I ought to get Vince to bring him in? And I said, yeah, he's a good guy, because I know him from before. Well, he comes in, gets that little push, gets over a little bit, and his head got bigger in this building. And now when I hear him talk about, well, yeah, you know, he cuts those promos, that motherfucker Hogan fucked me over. If not for Hogan, you'd still be up in Calgary starving. Hey, just remember the, in, the ingratitude in people is just unbelievable. I told him that one time. I said, Wayne, you were in rags in Calgary, and Hulk saved you. Oh, fuck you, Bundy. It wasn't like that. Okay, it wasn't like that. Then I wrestled him in the Independence a few years back. I hear through the grapevine, I busted his ribs. Well, maybe if he had an ounce of muscle anywhere on his body. I mean, I got a lot of fat, but at least there's some muscle under here. His wrists are about as big as my finger. So I called him. I said, Wayne, I feel terrible. I've never hurt anybody in my life. I said, please, send me your hospital bills for your broken ribs. I want to pay your bills. It's not right. Well, I don't worry about it. No, I, Wayne, I insist. Send me the bills. He says, well, I really didn't go to a hospital, but I know they're busted. You know, just more drama from the wrestlers. They love drama. But I had to get that on. Tape. Okay. That honky-tonk man. Yes, we love drama, life. don't we, Bundy? And then he's also, he also took about kicking Bundy Piper's ever had ass. My phone number. Do you know how quick Roddy Piper would kick Wayne Ferris's ass? No, he he did the he he. T I was in the turnbuckle and he ran in and splashed me in the turnbuckle. I mean, we were working for Ken Patera on a Ken Patera show, uh, and it it snapped. You can have a real bout. What happened was I was the 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 ropes were lower than what were normal for us, and when Bundy hit me. I went further back on the on the on the rope in my back, and it snapped. It didn't break a rib. It put my back out, and for about three months, it was extremely painful. Until I've had a guy that was able to pick me up and and it put it and and the pain went away right away. Right, I did whirlpools. I did everything. I didn't go to the hospital. I don't know where Bundy gets that stuff, but that's okay. Hey, Bundy, if I hadn't have done the very first shoot interview. You would have never got paid to do that interview, okay? Send me a goddamn thank you note. Better than that, just send me money because I'm a money-hungry motherfucker, okay? I need a commission off of you. I want my fucking money. On one of the other parts he mentions... <laughs> To be fair to you, because you, you're, you know, you've known Hulk Hogan a long time. But he should. He does owe me a commission because he said, I, if I had not done, see, there's a perfect example of when I went out and did these shoot interviews and I said all this stuff, Bundy, they would have never called you to do a shoot interview if I hadn't have been the one to open those doors for you. Why didn't you tell the people I was the one who told you, go to Atlanta, Georgia. Go down there and go to Dallas. When, 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 uh, uh, Gary Hart said he wanted to keep you and take you to Dallas and you asked me and I said if Gary Hart he's booking in Dallas and he wants to take you to Dallas Chris by all means get out of Knoxville because Black Jack Mulligan we're going to this going to the, the territory is going to close there's going to be no work here in another week or two the territory closed there was no work Bundy jumped took off went with Gary Hart became King Kong Bundy okay I don't even want a commission off of that. But you owe me fucking money for that, you asshole. Now pay me. You see how fun this is? I mean, if we were in the locker room, I'd say the same thing. So for all you fans out there on the internet, it's if I was, we would say the same thing to each other in the locker room. Uh, we all take shots at each other. Why not? Barbie mentions about Hulk Hogan. Was it Hulk Hogan's idea to, to talk to Vince and make you the Intercontinental Champion? Was that true? Uh, no, and I don't think, but, well, I don't know. I don't know if Hogan talked to Vince at all. All I know is I was walking. They were talking to each other in the hallway. And this is all I know. And we were in uh, Buffalo, New York. They were in the hallway, little hallway at the back of the, in the building. And I just happened to walk by. It came from the interview segments. And I just happened to walk by. And Hogan said, what about him? That's all Hogan said. What about him? And Vince says, maybe so. And he said, I'll let you guys talk. And he walked away. That's, that's the only thing I know about it. Other than that, I have no idea. 
If it happened, it happened. If he did that, I've said it thousands of times. If it wasn't for Hulk Hogan, none of us in this business would be sitting here today doing what we're doing. There's a, there's a ton of gratitude to be handed out to, to Hulk Hogan and to Vince McMahon. Vince had a vision, and I've always said this. Vince is a visionary. He sees things we don't see. We all question it. Why in the world did he do that? How can he do this? But he's a visionary. Uh, Branson that owns the airline, the billionaire guy that does uh, elementary, I think he's like an elementary school dropout or something, Richard Branson. He's a visionary. Ted Turner was a visionary. Bill Gates, a visionary. He had a vision to have a computer in everyone's house. Not only does he have a computer in everyone's house, he has multiple computers in everyone's house. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a vision. Vince had a vision of having these big, big extravaganzas, these big shows. He wasn't the first wrestling promoter to ever do that. His father had one at Shea Stadium with Bruno and, uh, and Larry Zbysko. And, and so uh, the, the Charlotte, they had, they had big shows. And uh, they had big shows in Chicago with Dick the Bruiser and those guys many, many years ago. Uh, there's, there's, and, and in Japan, there's, there's been big shows and stadium shows. But Vince had that vision of doing this on this large scale and do it around the world. It's, it took a long time. It took a big investment and it took a lot of worries and dealing with people like me and dealing with people like Bundy on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, what can you say? Vince is a billionaire. I'm sitting here doing these interviews. So Bundy's sitting there doing an interview in an empty building. There wasn't even any people in there. <laughs> it was an empty arena, right? Uh, <laughs> you drew really big on that show, didn't you, Bundy? <laughs> Sold out crowd. Back to Bundy real quick, and then I'll get off of Bundy. You got me on Bundy like I get on Jake Roberts sometimes in my comedy show, but... Uh, for Chris to say that about Calgary, I think is uh, he never worked there first and foremost, and sometimes you really shouldn't give broad opinions about something that you don't know a lot about. So he don't really know a lot about Calgary. Obviously, he says people go there to start, people go there to finish a career. I think Brett and Brett's brothers and and uh, Brett's sisters and and. Uh, people like that uh, that's been through Calgary on multiple occasions, big name people, would uh, probably take issue with that. And uh, I hope the internet fans now who jumped all over my ass about what I said about Brett and his concussion will now jump all over Bundy's ass and give him shit for uh, demeaning, really demeaning uh Calgary and Stampede Wrestling. Uh, I, that Bundy has a cheap shot, okay? Uh, next question from... Malou. I understand cheap shots. I couldn't say that if I wasn't an expert. I just hope it clears up some of this nonsense that, that I've heard for years. 